بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I am Dr. Ahmed Abdullatif ICU Consultant and Deputy ICU Head Saudi German Hospital Cairo I will speak about sepsis and septic shock delivery targeted resuscitation at the end of this lecture you will able to describe how to deliver early targeted resuscitation in patient with sepsis induced tissue hypoperfusion and the shock and understand special consideration when resuscitating pregnant patient five principles of sepsis management you have five principles the first one how to recognize patient with sepsis and septic shock patient with sepsis have suspected or documented infection plus acute life-threatening organ dysfunction which can be represented by increased SOVA score subset of this patient may have septic shock and show clinical sign of circulatory failure and hypoperfusion patient with this sepsis and septic shock need treatment and resuscitation immediately SOVA score has six variables including gas coma scale and uh, the ratio between PO2 and PHI2 and also mean, mean blood pressure and serum creatinine, platelet count and serum bilirubin and according to the score you can determine the level of mortality rate example if this is score 13-14 this denote mortality rate about 50-60 percent give appropriate protein spectrum antibiotic within one hour and after obtain of microbial culture send the broccoli screen level it's very important to support shortening duration of antibiotics give a targeted resuscitation during the first six hour monitor the patient record everything interpret and respond deliver quality care as soon as sepsis is suspected the clock has started so immediate interpreted access is very important to initiate fluid resuscitation peripheral IV catheter are easy to place and adequate to initiate resuscitation if unable to place a peripheral IV within few minutes then consider emergent central venous catheter Central venous catheter can be used as hemodynamic monitor to infuse fluid therapy towards the pressure antimicrobial and the blood transfusion at rapid rate. Central venous catheter should be placed under complex dry condition using ultrasound guidance when possible. Central venous catheter should be removed as soon as no longer needed to minimize the risk of infection. How to improve tissue perfusion? The intervention to improve tissue perfusion, you need fluids, crystallized fluids, you need vasopressor, entropes, back the RBCs. Earlier resuscitation combined with early appropriate antimicrobial therapy save life in patients with sepsis and septic shock. Resuscitation of adult patients with sepsis. During resuscitation, you have targets. The first target improved blood pressure mean arterial pressure equal or more than 65 systolic pressure more than 100 skin examination capillary fill less than 2 to 3 seconds if the age less than 65 years or less than 4.5 seconds if the age more than 65 years also absence of the skin modeling and well filled Briefer pulses, warm dry extremities, and improved sensorium, very important, and also adequate urine output, and urine output should be uh, about equal or more than 0.5 ml per kg per hour. Very important lab, very important lab uh, in our target, the serum lactate should be just admission of the patient, since serum lactate. And if this lactate serum lactate is more than 
2 millimol per liter urea measure again and your target to decrease it by 20% every 2 hours. Invasive hemodynamic parameter like central venous pressure and oxygen saturation of central venous are not superior to clinical targets of perfusion is not superior to clinical target of perfusion however can be used at a junket to guide patient care about the fluid type what the, what the fluid type here cholesterol fluid is preferred like lactate ranger regular acetate and normal saline but normal saline is associated with hypochloremic acidosis so balanced solution minimize this risk and avoid hypochloremia albumin also is effective effective as crystalloid in septic shock used in addition to the crystalloid when substantial crystalloid are needed for intravascular volume regulation don't give hypotonic fluids don't give semi colloids like starch based colloid has been associated with increased AKI renal replacement therapy and increased mortality also Resuscitation in the form of fluid challenge give initial fluid challenge of about 20 to 30 ml per kg over 30 to 60 minutes or faster perform sequential evaluation for the patient to assess clinical response if the shock is persist if shocks persist continue to give additional fluid challenge about to 50 ml to 500 ml over 30 minutes as long as there is cl clinical response the aim from fluid challenge to correct hypovolemia is hypovolemia associated with sepsis by improving the hypovolemia the stroke volume and cardiac output improve and also perfusion parameters also improve Fluid responsive patients show signs of improved perfusion with the fluid challenge. Fluid challenges when the patient is no longer fluid responsive can be harmful, like organ edema, prolonged days of mechanical ventilator. Where, however, predicting fluid responsiveness is a challenge. You have parameters like, like static parameters and dynamic variables. These static parameters like uh, CVV and inferior vena cava size don't reliable predict volume responsiveness in isolation. Dynamic variables may more reliably predict responsiveness, however, cut off point and sensitivity and specificity remain in question. Passive leg rise. Passive leg rise technique is a way to mimic fluid loading. By moving 300 ml of blood from lower extremities to the right heart to predict a further fluid loading may be helpful. Required real time direct measurement of cardiac output to assess effect. Patient must not be stimulated or coughing or in discomfort as this may increase sympathetic stimulation and alter the cardiac output effects. With cardiac ultrasound, you can detect the velocity time integral of left ventricular outflow tract and the changes of uh, time velocity time integral of about more than 18% with passive leg rising maneuver suggests of fluid responsive. In spontaneously breathing patient can also measure the inferior vacava. The correct measurement suggests the patient is likely to be fluid responsive. In inferior vena measuring less than 2 cm in diameter, coupled with IVC collapse more than 50% with each breath, or even inferior vena cava collapsibility, collapsibility more than 12%. Also, in the mechanically ventilated patient who are passive on the vent, fluid responsiveness is likely if inferior vena cava desensibility more than 18% CVV response to the fluid CVV response to fluid if cardiac output and blood pressure don't improve and CVV remain unchanged okay 
okay to try more fluid but if the fl CBB did increase then unlikely to respond to more fluid in going fluid resuscitation should be guided should be guided on individual basis based on based on reassessment of the clinical sign of the perfusion fluid responsiveness and the risk of fluid overload I want to stop fluid therapy to stop fluid therapy once resuscitation targets have been met to avoid the harmful effect of fluid overload to stop fluid if patient is no longer fluid responsive and develop signs of fluid overload like what very high CVB pulmonary edema hepatomegaly cardiac failure this is all signs of fluid overload what's the risk more of excess fluid therapy increased tissue edema worsened hypoxemia worsened also cardiac function in patient with cardiac poor cardiac uh, function and increased length of the stay and increased mortality also and may increase mortality even if the mean blood pressure remains less than 65 please start vasopressors vasopressors maintain minimum perfusion pressure and adequate flow during life threatening hypotension vasopressors are potent potent vasoconstrictors and increase myocardial contractility to little extent please give this uh, drug through central venous, venous central venous catheter give a strictly control rate titrate also to desired effect this continuing when no longer needed to minimize the risk the start was of result after initial fluid bolus but can be given also early during ongoing resuscitation when the shock is severe and the stroke pressure is low please don't delay administration don't delay administration of vasopressor the first choice of the vasopressor is norepinephrine is potent vasoconstrictor after that epinephrine is alternative and potent vasoconstrictor also and has an anotropic effect can add as additional agent to achieve desired effect can use also as alternative to norepinephrine is not available after that vasopressin vasopressin can be used to reduce norepinephrine dose can add as additional agent to achieve effect caution if caution is patient not yet evolomic restrictively is dopamine don't use dopamine because it may be associated with increased mortality and increase in tachyrrhythmia. titrate the of pressure to desired effect titrate to target main arterial blood pressure 65 to 70 millimeter mercury can individualize main arterial pressure target based on patient clinical characteristic like what consider higher main arterial pressure in patient with chronic hypertensive chronic hypertensive patient uh, need more higher blood pressure to reduce the risk of a KKI a patient respond better to higher main artery pressure titrate vasopressor pressure to improve markers of the perfusion uh, like mental status like urine output normalization of lactate skin examination titrate down vasopressor pressure blood pressure in above target range Anthrops for septic shock. Yes, you can add anthrops. Is the patient showing continuous signs of hypoperfusion, despite achieving adequate fluid loading and use of vasopressor to reach target main artery blood pressure? And this you are suspecting here. With this patient have low cardiac output, and document this with echocardiography. The first choice anthrop is duetamine. Dubutamine, or if not available, can be used epinephrine. You can start dubutamine with dose 2.5 mic per kg per minute and reach maximum 20 and to try to improve clinical marker of perfusion and cardiac output. Please don't aim to increase cardiac output to sober normal level. Risk, we have risk here now, like tachyrrhythmia and hypotension. Back the RBCs for shock. If the patient have hemoglobin level equal uh, to 7 uh, gram in percent or less, 
in absence of uh, myocardial infarction, severe hypoxemia, acute hemorrhage, please not targeting higher threshold, more than 90, uh, 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 doesn't lead to better outcome in patient with sepsis. Corticosteroid and the shock. Consider low dose of intravenous hydrocortisone. If adequate fluid restation and the pressure fail to restore, to restore hemodynamic stability. The dose is 50 mg every 6 hours. Please taper the steroid when the vasopressor no longer needed. Why? You have more risks from steroid like hyperglycemia, hypernatremia. When they have precaution, don't administer high doses of steroid, not more than 300 mg daily. Don't use insepsis without shock. Don't use to treat with influenza pneumonitis alone, but can be used for other respiratory indications. Hydrocortisone, vitamin C, thiamine for treating severe sepsis and septic shock. A study showed improvement of mortality. Treatment group showed 8.5% and mortality versus 40% for control group. And also no patient in treatment group developed progressive organ failure, decreased the duration of vasopressor use, treatment with combination, in this combination, decreased mortality and organ dysfunction. Hyperglycemia and the sepsis. Initiate a protocolized approach to blood glucose management when two consecutive measurement more than 180 milligram percent. Target glucose less than 180. Avoid intensive insulin for tight glucose control. This approach causes harm for the patient. Avoid white swings in glucose level. You need frequent monitor of blood glucose every one, two hours until stable, then every four hours to prevent hypoglycemia. Major risk is severe hypoglycemia. Caution, point of care measurement can be falsely high in shock. Interpret with caution. Phases of septic shock. You have four phases. The first one rescue phase, second one optimization phase, third one stabilization phase, and the last one de-escalation phase. Flow therapy over time. Over these four phases. During the first phase rescue, the patient needs life saving. Life saving to correct the shock. And this action from rapid pulses of fluid take minutes. Second phase organ rescue and they need optimization and maintain tissue perfusion. And uh, you need titrate fluid infusion and use of fluid challenge. And after that, the third phase stabilization and organ, organ support. And uh, your aim to become zero or negative fluid balance. And this, so you need minimal maintenance of infusion only if oral intake inadequate. And the last phase, this escalation, organ recovery, mobilized fluid accumulated, you need days to weeks, and the patient is recovering now, and will depend on oral intake only if possible, and avoid unnecessary IV fluids. Management of pregnant women with shock. Maternal positioning. Let her tilt, elevating either hip 10 to 12 centimeters or manual displacement of uterus to the left will augment the venous return to the heart. Enlarging gravid uterus, compressed pelvic and abdominal vessels, inhibiting venous return when patient in thobine. So tilting displaced uterus, maternal position should not be flat on back after 24 weeks. Even before maternal hemodynamics are compromised, blood may shunt away from uh, the placenta. Motor, woman, and the fetus. Once maternal blood pressure and its oxygen saturation are reduced, then the fetus will become rapidly distressed. Any recognition and resuscitation are essential. During pregnancy, there is overall 
increase in blood volume and the heart rate and cardiac output and reduction in encoded pressure. Management of pregnant women with shock should be ensure adequate hydration. Use IV fluid as necessary. Close attention to fluid balance to prevent fluid overload and pulmonary edema. Encoded pressure decreases through the pregnancy and in postpartum period. What's the pressure with pregnancy? Yes, can be, but cautiously, with appropriate, appropriate available monitoring. We decrease uterine perfusion. Administering with IV fluid. Administering with IV fluid because vasopressor pressure alone can be decreased utero placenta flow. Must monitor the fetus, please, during vasopressor pressure administering. Stay safe. Stay home. Thank you.